production and management. What are crop plants? Plants that are grown in a field for food and sometimes their fiber also are called crop plants. Crop plants produce the food that we eat. What kind of food constitutes as a crop? The foods that we consume in our daily meals, such as rice, wheat, maize, sugar, etc., are grown as crops in the fields. Crop plants are of various types. For example, rice, wheat, and barley are called cereals. Grams, Beans and peas are called pulses. Mustard, sunflower, and groundnuts constitute oil seeds. Can you find out more types of crop plants that are grown in India? The table here shows some crop plants and their type. Rice, wheat, and barley are cereals. Peas, grams, dals are pulses, mustard, groundnut are oil seeds, beetroot, sugarcane are sugar crop, coffee, tea, rubber are plantation crops, cotton and jute are fiber, and flax is fiber and linseed. Agricultural Practices Till 10,000 BC, people were nomadic. That means they were wandering in groups from place to place in search for food and shelter. They ate whatever they could find, like raw fruits and vegetables, and started hunting for animals for food. Later, they could cultivate land and produce rice, wheat, and all kind of other food crops. Thus was born agriculture. When plants of the same kind are grown and cultivated at one place on a large scale, it is called a crop. For example, crop of wheat means that all the plants grown in a field are that of wheat. You already know that crops are of different types of cereals, vegetables and fruits. These can be classified on the basis of the season in which they grow. The climatic conditions like temperature, humidity and rainfall vary from one region to another. Accordingly, there is a rich variety of crops grown in different parts of the country. Cropping Patterns First, Kharif Crops The crops which are sown in the rainy season are called Kharif Crops. The rainy season in India is generally from June to September. Paddy maize, soya bean, groundnut, cotton, etc. are kharif crops. Second, rabi crops. The crops grown in the winter season are called rabi crops. The time period is generally from October to March. Examples of rabi crops are wheat, gram, pea, mustard and linseed. Now besides these, pulses and vegetables are also grown during summer at many places. Different Steps of Agricultural Tasks Why can paddy not be grown in the winter season? Now that is a good question because 
paddy requires a lot of water. Therefore, it is grown only in the rainy season. Cultivation of crops involves several activities undertaken by farmers over a period of time. You may find that these activities are similar to those carried out by a gardener or even by you when you grow ornamental plants in your house. These activities or tasks are referred to as agricultural practices. These activities are First, Preparation of Soil Second, Sowing Third, Adding Manure and Fertilizers Fourth, Irrigation Fifth, Protecting from weeds. Sixth, harvesting. And finally, seventh, storage. Preparation of soil. Plowing. Before sowing the seeds, it is necessary to break soil to the size of grains to get better yield. This is done with the help of various tools. The main tools used for this purpose are the plough, hoe and cultivator. Plough This is being used since ancient times for tilling the soil, adding fertilizers to the crop, removing the weeds, scraping the soil, etc. This implement is made of wood and is drawn by a pair of bulls or other animals like horses, camels, etc. It contains a strong triangular iron strip called plough share. The main part of the plough is a long log of wood which is called a plough shaft. There is a handle at one end of the shaft. The other end is attached to a beam which is placed on the bull's neck. One pair of bulls and a man can easily operate the plough. Ho! It is a simple tool which is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil. It has a long rod of wood or iron. A strong, broad and bent plate of iron is fixed to one of its ends and works like a blade. It is pulled by animals. Cultivator Nowadays, ploughing is done by tractor-driven cultivator. The use of cultivator saves labour and time. Leveling The big clods of earth present in the soil are broken and the soil is pressed to make it even. This is called leveling. The surface of the soil is made even in order to check soil erosion. Leveling of soil makes the process of irrigation uniform. In other words, water can now be supplied evenly to the field. The leveling of the soil is done with the help of an iron or wooden leveller. A leveller can be driven by animals or by a tractor. Selection and Sowing of Seeds Sowing Sowing is the most important part of crop production. Before sowing, good quality seeds are selected. But what are good quality seeds? Well, good quality seeds are clean and healthy seeds of a good variety. Farmers prefer to use seeds which give a high yield. Obviously. Selection of Seeds 
First, let us do an activity, shall we? So, take a beaker and fill half of it with water. Put a handful of wheat seeds and stir well. Wait for some time. Are there seeds which float on the water? Yes, there are some seeds floating in water. Why is that so? Well, damaged seeds become hollow and are thus lighter. Therefore, they float on water. Now, isn't this a good method for separating good, healthy seeds from the damaged ones? Tools used for sowing Before sowing, one of the important tasks is to know about the tools used for sowing seeds. Traditional tools The tool used traditionally for sowing seeds is shaped like a funnel. The seeds are filled into the funnel, passed down through two or three pipes having sharp ends. Now these ends pierce into the soil and place seeds there. Seed drill Nowadays, the seed drill is used for sowing with the help of tractors. This tool sows the seeds uniformly at proper distances and depths. It ensures that seeds get covered by soil after sowing. This prevents damage caused by birds. Sowing by using a seed drill also saves time and labor. An appropriate distance between the seeds is important to avoid overcrowding of plants. This allows plants to get sufficient sunlight, nutrients and water from the soil. Sometimes a few plants have to be removed to prevent overcrowding.